come back to the next video in the crash 2017 how to read chest x-ray signal now this one we're going to talk about this doctor's abcde method and we'll just go through it you can find a bigger version of this in your handout so let's look at this x-ray so the first thing on there is d for details and this really means that you have the correct x-ray we used to i used to put this in a for appropriate but i think it's better here details and really you're going to look at the top it's usually the top left of the film it's going to have the patient's name the the date of the x-ray the patient's uh, date of birth that sort of thing what kind of x-ray it is as well because you want to make sure that you're looking at the right x-ray that you're not looking at the wrong patient and so that's d next is r for ripe and when you get a fruit like a mango that's ripe it's really good right so you want to make sure that your x-ray is also really good that the quality of it is good and so there's a couple of things that you look at the first is rotation inspiration picture and exposure so rotation is the patient twisted you know facing sideways uh, and so the way that you look at that is you look at the clavicular heads and so these clavicular heads here should be about equidistant from the spinous process, processes which represent the middle of the x-ray and so they should be equidistant and in this case I think it looks pretty good and then the next thing is the eye for inspiration you want to make sure that the patient took a nice deep breath in when they shot the x-ray because that's how we look at it and you can see more lung that way and so you should have eight to ten posterior ribs visible above the diaphragm and so let's count we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so that's good we got ten ribs there so we got a good uh, x-ray maybe even got eleven and so maybe this one is a little bit hyper expanded but uh, I think it looks pretty good otherwise and then the next thing you want to look for is the picture meaning do we have a big enough picture here and what you're really looking for is if you can see both costophrenic angles on the x-ray right that means that you've got enough of the the film on here enough of the chest on the film additionally it's nice if the scapulae are not overlying the chest that they're kind of off to the side and it looks like we have that here and so then I would say the picture is pretty good here and finally the last one E is for exposure and that means was enough uh, were enough x-rays thrown through the patient if there's not enough then things are going to appear whiter than they should if there's too much then things are going to appear blacker than they should and the way that you do this is you should be able to barely see the intervertebral disc spaces especially down toward the bottom through the heart and so I'm going to trace some of these vertebrae so you can see then this is where they are and so these are the spaces that we want to be able to just barely see and I'm starting to kind of lose it here in the heart it's getting harder to see but I can still see them so they are just barely visible so if our x-ray is ripe it's not rotated we got a good inspiration we got a good picture and we got good exposure then we can say that it's a good film if it isn't then you might need to shoot it again and sometimes you'll see that uh, there are, are x-rays shot and we, they shoot two x-rays the text shoot two x-rays because the patient may be too big to fit on the film and so in order to get the whole picture in there they got to do two uh, so now let's go to the next one the next s stands for soft tissue and bones and so you could look at all the different bones we have in here right we have our clavicle bones we have all of the ribs to look at we have our vert vertebrae to look at and you look for any breaks in them look for any uh, masses in them any kind of lesions that might be in there other soft tissues that you want to look at include the great vessels so you might see some calcium deposits they look like it looks white because calcium's what gives the uh, the whiteness of bones too so you might see some white deposits along here and that happens as we age and get atherosclerosis you can also look in the soft tissues for subcutaneous air and that would be like black blackish stripes that kind of appear in there because in an x-ray black is the color of air another place that you might see air is you might see it around the heart around the pericardium or you might see it in over here if you get something called pneumomediastinum you'll see air pockets there you might see it under the diaphragm over here again it would appear black and that is free air under the diaphragm which is indicative of a perforated bowel or stomach or something like that so air in these places is not good 
and finally just you know in women you'll, you'll see breast shadows uh they're right there that like that and you know they of course make things look less dark than normal but just note those that that's the reason why and so that is our s for soft tissues and bones Next comes A for airway and mediastinum, and so again, we're going to look, remember, at our carina, and look at our trachea, and look at our bronchi, and that should be somewhat in the midline of the film. Sometimes it's a little bit slightly to the right. You can also look at the mediastinal width, and so that's this distance here, and that's usually going to be somewhere around 8 centimeters or less. In the old days, we should just take our pager and put it on there because our pagers were all 8 centimeters in size and said if it was greater than the length of our pager then it was too big. You can also look for the hilum you know, that's over there and there where the, all the vessels and bronchi and all that come out and you might notice that the left hilum is usually a little bit higher than the right side. So the hilum is another one of the mediastinal structures so that is airway and mediastinum. Now B is breathing and that's really about all of this lung space over here so that's what we're going to look at and the first thing that we look at is the vascularity and you could kind of see these like vascular markings kind of going out all across the lungs like that and that's normal because we know that there are blood vessels inside of the lungs and you should see them up to at least two centimeters but sometimes you can see them going further uh, as you, like down here so the lower you get the, the further out you get and at the apices it's harder to see them but you should look for those lung markings because if you don't see the lung markings let's say you just see blackness here without any lung markings then that means that there's not lung parenchyma going there and that could be the sign of a pneumothorax that you need to find now the pneumothoraces are of course going to be harder to see at the apices right because we said it's hard to see the vascular markings because you know water is heavier and so it tends to to go down and it's more obvious as gravity pulls it down than it is up at the top but so just be careful and look for those and look for look all along the edges to see if you see blackness and, and lack of vascular markings reaching the end because that's a sign of a pneumothorax and also look within the the uh, lungs for any kind of infiltrates and so that might look like something like this it might be low you know it might be localized like this it might be an entire lobe of a lung as I tried to draw over here and another thing you might see is a fluid in the fissures. You might see fluid collecting in the fissures, especially if someone has CHF, that the fluid might start collect collecting there, and you can see them more obviously then. And another place to look for fluid is in the costophrenic angles. It might uh, collect down here and even on the other side. And then it looks like you could see that you lose that nice sharp corner of these costophrenic angles and then you get what's called blunting of the costophrenic angles and you can see that also with uh, fluid overload or pleural effusions that's a sign of a pleural effusion that's you know fluid collecting outside the pleura sorry in between the pleura so that's all you all the stuff that you would look for in the breathing spaces in the B so now let's move on to C which is circulation and so really you're gonna look at the heart right and so the heart most of it is gonna be on the left side so about two-thirds here and one-third over here another thing you should do is look to look at the cardiothoracic ratio and so this distance here should be about equal to or less than equal to this distance here or and said another way that the the cardiac ratio should be about half the the distance uh, of the thorax and so the distance of the heart should be half that of the heart of the thorax you should be able to see the aortic knob properly you might that might be obscured in things that are upsetting the mediastinum uh, such as a thoracic aortic dissection the heart should have this nice shape that we see because sometimes you'll get things that look like that or that take up the whole that are more uh, boot shaped and so you're looking for this normal shape here and of course just look at the heart borders sometimes you know they should be easily seen sometimes they're obscured especially if there's a pneumonia that's over here it makes the heart borders look all shaggy and not as easily seen 
Okay, that was C for circulation, and now we're going to move on to the next one, which is D for diaphragm. And we already talked about a little bit that the the right hemidiaphragm is going to be higher than the left hemidiaphragm. We talked about the fact that the costophrenic angles should be clear. We want to make sure that there's no air underneath the diaphragm. We want to make sure that that gastric bubble is there underneath the diaphragm and not up above as you might see in a diaphragmatic hernia or a tear of the diaphragm. Okay, and so that was D for diaphragm. So now we're finally up on to E for extras, and extras really is about uh, various tubes and other things that are there. So you might see a line going through tubes because the tubes have these radiopaque strips in them so you can see them. So if someone's intubated, you would probably see one coming here, approaching the carina and it should be about two centimeters above the carina. There's the carina right there, and so this one's probably a little bit too close. You could see an NG tube going into the stomach, and we don't want to see that thing going into the lung or something like that. If the patient has a chest tube, you can see a chest tube going in. We don't want to see the chest tube either going, you know, going outside of the chest where it's not draining things. We want it to be into the chest. Sometimes chest tubes are uh, pointed downward, and sometimes they're pointed upward. And so you can also look at in which direction it's going. You'll off, you might see a pacemaker. Sometimes patients have pacemakers, and that looks like a big metallic device there. Sick patients always have all kinds of lines and leads and things going on them. So you're going to see all kinds of wires going across the patient. And so you're going to be able to identify what those things are. And for the lateral chest x-ray, you want to do the same thing. You can go through the same uh, mnemonic. You can look at the details and make sure that this is... Uh, the right patient. You could look to see that you can see the entire chest on here to make sure that it's a ripe image. Uh, you're going to see obviously here that the vertebra are pretty obvious all the way through, but maybe they, maybe you can't see them and it's over penetrated or maybe they're too bright and it's under penetrated. Uh, you're also going to look at the soft tissues and bones so you could look at all of these. These bones are obvious over here. The other ones you can obviously see the chest wall sometimes here. The ribs going across are a little bit harder to see. You can look for the airway. Again, the airway we saw before, that was here. Here's our airway as it kind of tapers down in there too. And so that's one thing you can do. Breathing, the, especially the lung spot that you can look at really good on the lateral is this retrocardiac space. But you can also, you know, you know that the, the there's an oblique fissure that comes through here. And so you might see something like this, which makes you think, oh, maybe there's a left lower lobe pneumonia. Circulation, you can look at the heart. You can look at the aorta, too, as it kind of goes down like that. We can look at the diaphragm again, too. And right, We saw the diaphragm very clearly here on these views here, the diaphragm. And the costophrenic angles, you can see very nicely, too. And if the patient has a pacemaker or other stuff, you're gonna, you might see those wires and things like that. Usually, you're not going to be getting a lateral chest x-ray on somebody who's really sick and has a bunch of wires and leads and stuff on them because they have to go to the x-ray department to get that, and they're not going to have all those go there with all those wires on them. But if, if it's something that they came in with, like a pacemaker, you might see that. And so that's it. This is our, our video on the basic chest x-ray interpretation method. We're using the lifeinthefastlane.com. You can check out that website, and it's doctors A, B, C, D, E. And in the next videos, we're going to go through eight different diagnoses, eight different types of chest x-rays using this technique and looking for what we find uh, using this technique. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.